Hey guys, uh, I've been to see uh, The Avengers Age of Ultron twice now and I, I did enjoy the film quite a lot and I was really really looking forward to it in the cinema and the build up and the uh, Phase 3 announcement and all these things built it up massively. I was really really looking forward to it. Um, but I did notice a lot of issues with the narrative and some of the dialogue and mainly the plot elements of the film that don't really work very well. I just wanted to discuss why I think this is one of the more weaker films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The way that I'm doing this is the first time I've done something like this and if it goes well then I might make more of these kind of videos but this is just my, my initial kind of thoughts on the film. I've seen it twice now, uh, I've seen it in 2D and 3D. The 3D in the film wasn't utilised at all and wasn't in the cinema that I watched it in it wasn't good at all so I don't recommend watching it in 3D but then again if you've got a good cinema that does a good 3D it might be good there. It just wasn't where I went to see it. Also, this video will contain massive spoilers for the film, so please, please, please go and watch the film before coming and looking at this video. I enjoyed the film. Um, I think a lot of people out there will enjoy the film and it will do just what they want. I, however, have different problems with the film, as I've already mentioned. At the start of the film, we see the Avengers kind of going towards this... Uh, this camp in some kind of Eastern European place and um, within this facility the Hydra have taken place which is absolutely fine that's fine uh, which makes sense as well also with the events that happen at the post credit scenes of Captain America 2 however within this facility is the giant whale like Chitauri kind of guide ship thing which I don't think is necessary there's no need for that to be there really at all within this plot only for the dream sequence which Iron Man has or Tony Stark has that quicks uh, the scholar which puts inside of his head um, this is an issue with the film when Scarlet Witch messes with Iron Man's with Stark's head at the start of the film it's not shown whether she is still in control of him or is not in control of him when he takes Loki's scepter out of the place where Hydra were keeping it uh, this it was confusing on both occasions I saw the film so I'm still unsure of whether she controlled him to pick it up or whether he picked it up out of his own free will after seeing what she made him see uh, the scene which he sees in the dreamlike state is something which I think is necessary for the kind of foreshadowing of events in future films but in this film I think it was actually used as something to put in the trailer to make people go and see it. Within the first uh, scene of the film as well we see Scarlet Witch for the first time. Um, she appears outside a door with Captain America and then shuffles backwards out the door uh, which doesn't really make any sense. Uh, it's kind of sped up and she moves backwards and it's a kind of a cool effect but this is never used throughout the rest of the film. Like why would you put something in the film like that specifically for this character that we've never seen before if she's never going to do it ever again within the rest of the film. It just doesn't really make any sense and unfortunately it doesn't work because of this. Also massive 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 plot hole within the first I don't know 10 minutes of the film. What after Scarlet Witch has given Tony Stark the vision of the Avengers dying she then allows him to take Loki's scepter I mean for her to know about the scepter she must know it's an incredibly powerful object because her and Quicksilver's powers came from that object uh, later on in the film it's discussed that Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver hate Tony Stark and want to go against the Avengers because Tony Stark's missiles killed their family and they were terrified because they thought it was going to kill them as well. This is something which I found very, very confusing because at the start of the film, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver have Tony Stark at their grasp. They could just have gone and killed him right then. There was no other need for the rest of the plot of the film because they could have easily just killed Stark when he was on his own, vulnerable, after the dream that Scarlet Witch put inside of his head. And they could have ended it all there. But instead, the film has to have a narrative, so they just let him take one of the most powerful things that they've ever come across, and they can assume it's powerful because it gave them their powers. It's a fundamentally like broken plot uh, based around that film. I didn't mind the way that Ultron was created. Uh, I thought the, the CGI kind of uh, holograms um, representing what the two things were was an interesting idea. However, it was hard to understand whether Jarvis was a representation of Jarvis and whether the AI in the mind gem was uh, like a hologram of the mind gem or because it seemed to be able to physically attack Jarvis uh, even though later on in the film Thor I think walks through the hologram of Jarvis so 
I don't know whether it's a representation, but if it was, then how are the two holograms able to fight each other physically, apparently? Also, in this film, there is no image of Ultron being created physically in his physical form. He just exists in, um, I forgot, in the place, uh, and Scarlet Witch quicks over, just go and see him. However, in one of the trailers, there is the kind of shot that suggests that he melds himself out of metal, uh, which is kind of confusing. They didn't actually put that in the film. It would have been nice to see, rather than just seeing Ultron in the flesh first, first time, after having no instance of him actually being physically created. The Avengers also go to Wakanda, or Africa, or the edge of Africa, um, in one of the scenes of the film which I found most infuriating. They introduce a villain which will be there for Black Panther, but they don't really do anything with him in this film. They just make him ridiculously rich and chop off his arm, allowing him to have an adamantium arm in the Black Panther film. Um, this is an issue because Black Panther isn't mentioned at all within this film. It's like hey, the place where all this vibranium is that we need is in this one place where this one character from the universe exists, but we're not going to mention him at all. Please, can you put something in there? I mean, it, it could be an Easter egg, just to, just for the fans. Maybe it was an Easter egg and I missed it because I don't read the comics that much, even though I do enjoy reading them occasionally, and I know some of the lore about the universe as well. There is also the existence of Veronica, the Hulkbuster armour, which was mentioned earlier on in the film uh, with Bruce Banner and Tony Stark talking about the creation of it, but it was never mentioned it actually was until it kind of poofed off a satellite, came to Earth and became the Hulkbuster. That annoyed me as well. Another massive, massive issue with the Hulkbuster here. Um, if you've got two minds like Tony Stark and Bruce Banner making a piece of machinery and equipment that can stop the Hulk, why would you build a metal cage that doesn't have a bottom? Like it's, it's pretty strange that they overlook the fact that the Hulk can dig himself out of a metal confinement. Uh, the whole fight could have been avoided because of this. I also think that the uh, the Hulkbuster fight was completely pointless in regards to the rest of the narrative. Sure that we see how um, he's manipulated by Scarlet Witch, but there is absolutely no narrative reason for the fight to level half an African city. Uh, this fight goes on and on and on, and sure, it's cool because there's an Iron Man and a Hulkbuster suit and the Hulk fighting each other, and sure, that is cool. I mean, why wouldn't it be cool? But there's no reason for it to be there because uh, the way that I thought the fight was going to go as I was watching the film was I thought that this fight was going to create the rest of the world see the Hulk and the Avengers as a destructive force rather than the force of saving siding the rest of the world and the news and the media with Ultron. One of the big problems I had with this massive fight in um, one of these African cities which is just unnamed um, is that the whole fight destroys the city. There's n there's no reason for this fight to even be there. Like it destroys the city without a st without a single kind of mention of what's happening. The only thing that does happen is Maria Hill says uh, to, uh, that the news are loving it because they're able to like put it on TV and stuff. But apart from that, it's basically like it could have been really well, really really good to show the media and the news and the people of the world go against the Avengers because of this seamless like. There's no need for this destruction, so this destruction could have led to the rest of the world going alongside with Ultron's kind of motives, uh, which would make perfect sense, but this never happens. The end of the fight it happens, uh, there's like a skyscraper that gets destroyed. Uh, I know Tony Stark mentions that he's going to buy the tower, but that doesn't really help the fact that there are civilians walking down the pavement and cars and traffic going on while this tower gets absolutely brutally devastated causing smoke and rubble and like just horrible kind of atmosphere to spread everywhere within the city destroying it uh, and the only other mention of that is that the Tony Stark Foundation's there to kind of set up camp and help everyone so it's fine and none of the Avengers are gonna get any slack for it which is an issue the film after the Hulkbuster fight crawls to a bit of a pace, uh, uh, crawls to a very, very, very slow pace actually, introducing Hawkeye and his family and his kids and his relationship with Natasha, and I thought this was very interesting. I thought I didn't mind it, but it did slow down the pacing of the film. However, Nick Fury comes out of absolutely nowhere, which is like, why, why would that have to... It doesn't even need to be there. The talk that he has with Iron Man is kind of unimportant. Thor in this scene also goes without 
telling anyone where he's going, ends up going to some kind of pool, which is a magical pool that exists, you know, this thing just exists, please can you talk about it before you get to the pool, rather than getting to the pool and then just saying, oh yeah, by the way, this this actually exists and we can see some stuff in it. Within this scene also, I have no idea how Thor could see the power gem from the Guardians of the Galaxy. He has no knowledge that this stone exists and is in that orb and within the film i know it's for the audience to see but you see the orb open and then have the stone inside this doesn't make sense because thor hasn't seen the orb or the stone so he doesn't even know what color the stone is um it is fundamentally flawed the fact that he's never seen it and yet he's seeing it for the first time but already knows exactly what it is where it is and that it's in an orb and it's floating in space Great. I quite like the fact that four of the Infinity Stones were kind of flashed on screen before the Vision's eyes opened. However, I do think that later on in the film, they discuss the stones way too much and it's way too obvious for the audience that what they're discussing. I know they have to cater for everyone, but I'd rather it be a slight nod to the audience saying, oh, by the way, this is what we're doing. Because everyone that's watched and very much into these films will know about the event and the, the Thanos with the gauntlet. Uh, that was shown on that uh, on the reveal of Phase 3. Towards the middle of the film, when they go co to Korea uh, to get Ultron and the casket, uh, Ultron's in a truck, and Cap says that any jolt from the Mind Gem could level the city. Okay, he's got absolutely no authority to say that. Like, how would he know? He doesn't know about these gems. Like, why the hell does he know about this? Um, and why does he assume that this is going to happen? Issues within this scene, there are quite a few I had. Um, Cap jumps onside the uh, van which Ultron is within. Ultron then blows up the door of the van with Cap landing on it. And then there is a shot of Cap on the floor, on this scrap metal bit, for about 20 seconds. It would appear that Ultron doesn't attack him whatsoever. Like, seriously, what the hell? Why, why hasn't Ultron got rid of him? Why do they have to have the fight longer? Another massive, massive issue, I haven't read the Age of Ultron comic, and I haven't read any books surrounding Ultron or his kind of powers or like how he came to fruition in the comics. However, in this film he seems to be able to control the Force, because within this scene he pulls out parts of the city from the floor, knocking Captain America over and loads of cars and stuff, but you didn't show that in earlier in the film. It would be good if you could tell me why he's able to control the floor like this. The Asian Doctor in the film is also dead in one of the scenes and she thinks it's a great idea to pause the upload from Ultron to the Vision but I don't understand why she thought pausing it would be the best idea when you have this massive robot which has control over your entire office and all your staff and she presses the pause button like really like and of all the things you could have done maybe encode a different bit of data uh, created something like try to make him good uh, manipulate something that way she just presses pause and dies well apparently dies although at the end of the film in the new avengers research facility facility it looks like she is still alive i thought i saw her towards the end of the film before the stan scars got shot in the new avengers facility so that is something which is not raised at all when the vision gets created um quicksilver unplugs all the cables from the cradle uh, it's logical to assume that he takes all of the cables out in order to stop it because he wouldn't know which is the power cable uh, and he does go to multiple areas of the room to take out these cables now it's logical to assume that one of these cables was connected to the computers enabling Stark and Banner to upload Jarvis into the Vision. But if if Quicksilver just unplugged all the cables, then Thor's electricity shouldn't be able to transfer that data into the cradle. It should just turn the cradle on or power the cradle rather than actually transfer the data, which is what happens within the film and it doesn't make any sense. Also within this scene, the argument between Captain America and Tony Stark would have been a very, very... Uh, interesting way to kind of start an argument or carry on from like the kind of um, not argument but you know um, slightly harsh toned conversations they have at Hawkeye's house when they're chopping up wood you know this could have been a good way to kind of show that they're not they're not on each other's side all the time and set up civil war I mean, this could be a really good really good option to set up civil war and it just doesn't happen at all Vision towards the end of the film when they're fighting, um, he just faints and it's not really shown 
why he faints. He just kind of gets taken out by Ultron and faints. After taking over Ultron, he just kind of falls to the floor until he's needed again, which is something which really annoyed me. And his powers weren't really shown very well in the film. Within the fight sequence, he was just flying around punching things, and he's got a laser on his head. Like, why the hell wouldn't he just use the mind gem as a laser and take down loads of things? Um, towards the end of the uh, the fight scene as well, um, Black Widow's locked up by Ultron. If Ultron wants to kill all the Avengers and get rid of them, why the hell would he lock one of them up? Why would he not just kill her? Surely this is a big, big plot hole. Also, within the fight at the end of the film, they fight a load of robots, and then they stop fighting for a bit, a bit of dialogue's conversed, and then they fight more robots, and there's a line by Cap saying that there's a, another wave of robots coming. How the hell does he know there's another wave of robots coming? And why are they in waves? Why can't they all just come at the same time? If I was Ultron, why would you not just send your entire army together? I don't really understand why he'd keep some behind to then fight later on. It just doesn't really make any sense. Quicksilver's death didn't see that coming. really, really annoyed me because earlier in the film it shows a bullet going past his face in slow motion. Quick at everything, like he's quick tempered. Everyone goes so slow for him. Suggesting he can see things in slow motion and slow down time, like Quicksilver in X-Men Days of Future Past. Why the hell does Quicksilver die from bullets at the end of the film if he's able to slow down time and see them in slow motion. Everyone goes so slow for him. It doesn't make any sense. As fast or almost as fast as a bullet. As fast or almost as fast as a bullet. As it fast or almost as fast or almost as fast or almost as fast. Why would this happen? Like seriously, why did they think this was a good thing to do? <laughs> Iron Man is also not really in the final fight at all. He's just floating around the city trying to work out how to fix it which is understandable, but the rest of the team are fighting robots, and he could probably be of use. The city also has reverse thrusters that launch it towards the planet. Did no one in the city question these thrusters being built? I'm guessing they had to be built somehow, and they just exist when it's necessary to, for them to exist. One of the moments in the film that I saw in the trailer and expected to happen was two cars fall off the city in midair uh, and fall crashing towards the Earth. Now. I thought that they should have died. The people in those cars should have definitely have died, and it would have added another tone, another layer of kind of darkness to the rest, to the kind of apocalyptic ending that could have happened. It would have been really, really nice, well not nice, but interesting to see how someone like Cap would react to a member of the public dying without him being able to save them. You know, I know they're all superheroes and they try and save people, and they're able to save people, but really, why couldn't they just, you know, kill that? Ultron builds himself out of Vibranium, and then destroys his previous copy, and builds himself again in Vibranium. How much Vibranium does Ultron actually have, and how much did he steal out of Wakanda? Why didn't Ultron upload him to the internet? Like, and if he did, it isn't explained that Tony Stark gets rid of him well enough, I don't feel. Um, if you were an AI, why would you not upload yourself to the internet multiple times in different areas, hide them in order to stay alive and self-preserve? Is that an illogical thing to think? Also, why does he have a heart? Why the hell did they think it was a good idea to give him a heart that uh, Scarlet Witch can take out of him? Like, it just ruins ruins that kind of segment of the film. Completely unrealistic. Two things that I think would have been really nice in this film. Uh, I would have liked to have seen Hulk fly into space, um, but he doesn't, and you all know the scene which I'm talking about. And there's also the scene I would have liked to see in either Captain America 2 or some of the other Phase 2 films, him rebuilding the Stark Tower into the Avengers Tower and the robots that kind of just exist at the start of the film and we're just given it to accept that it exists doesn't really work. It is worth me saying that I did enjoy the film, it's just I have a lot of issues with it and it does break up so many things within the film, thinking about it after watching it, rather than going into it thinking about it, not thinking about it, it's important to watch films and think about films when you're watching them uh, and I just had a lot of problems with it, even though I did enjoy it I'm really really looking forward to phase 3. Thank you for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe if you want to. I will upload more videos in the future.